Hello students, welcome to Sitara Myers tutorial. So in this video, we are going to complete international relations entire full topics in this video. So let's start with the first the topic India and US relations. So India and US both are democratic countries. Both stand against terrorism and both enjoy their strategic partnership to counter the Chinese influence on some parts of the world and some important uh, areas like strategic partnership between India and US are uh, the critical minerals you can see in the picture over here critical minerals sharing technological advancements in the defense technology telecommunication critical emerging technologies space technology quantum technology Indian citizens go to US for education and medical purposes and the US citizens comes to India for education and medical purposes. Both the countries stand together to counter terrorism and strive for Indo-Pacific security, improve trade and economy through multiple platforms. So around 4.9 million Indians live in the US. In fact, Indians are the second largest immigrant group in the US after the Mexicans. In 2022 to 23, around 128.55 billion dollar trade took place between India and US. Majority of the Indian goods are exported to the US for uh, and for India, US is the largest export destination. Coming to the trade in defense equipment, around 11% of defense equipment supply is from US and uh, around 29% is from France and around 45% of defense equipment supply is from Russia. So uh, by this we can state that US is the third largest defense supplier and uh, India has made four major defense agreements between uh, with the US so those four agreements are you can see in the box over here the defense ties so the first one is the logistics exchange memorandum of association 2016 the second one is communication compatibility and security agreement 2018 the third agreement is international security agreement of 2019 and the fourth one is basic exchange and cooperation agreement 2020 so all these four agreements are made between India and US. Both the countries also participate in the military exercises like Yuddha Abhyas, Vajra Prayag, Prahar, Malabar, Rimpak, etc. So recently our Prime Minister has visited US and signed various strategic deals and partnerships. So some of the signed deals and agreements are for technology purpose, for the, for the technology transfer and in inter-agency led strategic trade dialogue was introduced and to promote commercial opportunities, research, talent and skill development, memorandum of understanding on semiconductor supply chain and innovation partnership was signed. The next one is in the telecommunication sector, open radio access network that is open RAN was launched by both India's Bharat 6G and US Next G LNs to reduce the cost of data and communication uh, to achieve comprehensive quantum information sciences and technology to develop and commercialize the artificial intelligence and quantum technology between the two countries Indo US quantum coordination mechanism was established and uh, Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technology that is ICET was established on January 2023. So it is headed by the National Security Council Secretariat in India and US National Security Council. So ICET was launched to strengthen, the, strengthen and broaden the industrial cooperation and strategic technological partnership between companies, institutions of India and US. Another important initiative are um, India and US new and emerging renewable energy technology action platform was launched. India became a member in the US led mineral security partnership. 
Indo US Global Challenge Institutes are established for deeper research partnership between India and US. And US said it would launch a pilot project to provide temporary work visas in 2023. So this is about the overall view of India and US relations. Now let's look into the particular particular one topic between India and US defense relations. So US is the third largest defense equipment supplier for India. The first one is Russia with 45% of defense supply. And the second one is France with 29% of defense supply. Okay. So US is the third largest defense equipment supplier for India. So our Indian Prime Minister visited US and made some defense related agreements. So they are the first agreement is the agreement uh, made to co-produce uh, GE414 jet engine. Okay. So this jet engine will be made between General Electric and Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. So this one GE414 jet engine is a uh, turbofan engine. Next one is 31 high altitude MQ-9B drones will be procured from US and US India Defense Acceleration Ecosystem that is Indus X was launched. So under this Index X defense technological uh, knowledge sharing and cooperation between two countries are encouraged. This is about the India and US defense relations. The next topic is India and US space relations. So as per the recent agreements, India has become the 27th member of the Artemis Accord. So here, uh, look at this box over here. So these are all uh, the members of Artemis Accord. So India has become the 27th member of Artemis Accord. So here, um, Artemis Accord means the common principles established by the US State Department and NASA to govern civil exploration and usage of outer space, moon, Mars, comets and asteroids for peaceful purposes. So India became 27th member of Artemis Accord and NASA has agreed to provide advanced training to our Indian astronauts. So, Due to this technological sharing and uh, advancement in uh, space technology also will be improved. Okay, so this is about India and US space relations. This is only the, about the recent news. Next topic is India US digital trade relations. So here to promote technological advancement in quantum technology between both the countries, a joint Indo-US quantum coordination mechanism was launched to develop and commercialize artificial intelligence and quantum technologies. US-India Science and Technology Endowment Fund was set up. Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technologies or ICED was launched to strengthen and broaden emerging technologies in defense, artificial intelligence, semiconductor, wireless telecommunications, etc. So here overall uh, with good relations with the US, we can improve economically, technologically and even our trade, digital trade relations also will be improved. So Open RAN that is Open Radio Access Network was launched to improve and make data and communication system affordable. Okay, so this is about the overall view of India and US relations topic is India and Nepal relations. Nepal is one of our neighboring countries. So it shares border with five Indian states. You can look into the map over here. The five border, uh, border states that share with Nepal are Sikkim, West Bengal, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand. And the, the border length is 1850 kilometers. They have open border with Nepal and the Nepali citizen can avail the facilities and opportunities same like Indian citizens as per the India-Nepal Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1950 agreement. So Nepal is strategically very important for India because 
it acts like a natural security and buffer zone between india and china it supports india to reduce the spreading of terrorism and maoism india has made several development projects with nepal like the cross border railways so you can see in this picture over here several stops are laid down between india and nepal so cross border railways were laid pancheshwari multi purpose project bridges over mahakali river also was laid so for nepal india is the largest trading partner and the highest source of foreign direct investment fdi so india is a highest source of fdi for nepal and india and nepal both are part of several multilateral cooperations like dbin that is bangladesh bhutan nepal and india and bimstec so bay of bengal initiative for multilateral security techni uh, technical and economic cooperation and also they are part of non aligned movement and sarc etc so several platforms are laid down where both india and nepal are partners next is nepalese soldiers are recruited under the gorka regiment of indian army and indian india assists nepal in modernizing the nepal army so joint military exercises like surya kiran are done between the countries so for meeting the electrical needs between the border areas of both the countries power exchange agreement of 1971 is done and south asia's first cross border petroleum pipeline is constructed between india and nepal connecting motihari in india to amlekganj in nepal so it is constructed and funded by the indian oil corporation limited in 2019 to promote cultural significance swami vivekananda center for indian culture was set up in kathmandu and India International Center for Buddhist Culture and Heritage was inaugurated in Lumbini Nepal so many rivers flows through India and Nepal so there is a hydro power cooperation and flood control projects for both the countries so west seti river is a tributary of karnali river so a memorandum of understanding was signed between west seti and the saptakoshi um sorry west seti river and the seti river projects okay so both the rivers both the countries even agreed to develop the saptakoshi high dam project on the kosi river so mahakali treaty on hydropower cooperation was also laid down and upper karnali project in the western nepal and aruntri projects on western nepal are also signed between india and nepal so india and nepal relations are in news because recently in june month nepal prime minister has visited india and several initiatives and agreements were signed between both the countries and as per the agreements twin integrated check post were inaugurated in rupai diha in india and nepal ganj in nepal so we have we know we have we share open borders with nepal and the border length of india and nepal is 1850 kilometers so various memorandum of understandings were signed between india and nepal so here you can look in to this points over here uh, the development of dodara chandani check post along india nepal border was done development of Phuket Karnali hydro power hydro electric project was done and cross border payments laying the second cross border petroleum pipeline between Siliguri in India and Japa in Nepal so here the first uh, cross border petroleum pipeline was between Motihari and Amlekganj pipeline so this is a second cross border petroleum pipeline so it is between Siliguri in India and Japa in Nepal so the first pipeline extension was also made to chitwan so these are all the memorandum of understandings and india also agreed for the first trilateral power trade from nepal to bangladesh through india for up to 40 megawatts of power thus there are strong friendship between india and nepal but at the same time due to china's influence and economic um cooperation with nepal 
China's economic cooperation with Nepal, some security issues like arms smuggling, terrorist activities, and the trust gap is increasing. And there are air connectivity issues be- between India and Nepal also. So Nepal has rec- uh, in twenty twenty published a new map. So in that new political map, Nepal has showed three Indian territories. That is the Kalapani, Lipu Lake, and Limpiyadura. All these were part of Nepal as per the Nepal's political map. But this is actually the part of Indian territories. So this has increased the border disputes between them. Thus, revising the friendship treaty of India and Nepal, enhancing the air connectivity, limited interference in India of India in Nepal politics. by resolving the border disputes and by organizing joint cultural events film festivals etc again the friendship between india and nepal can be strengthened so this is about the india and nepal relations the topic is china's rising influence in central asia so recently in the month of may china has completed its 30 years of diplomatic relations with the central asian countries so it has invited tajikistan uzbekistan kazakhstan turkmenistan and kyrgyzstan these are the five central asian countries so china plus five central asian countries are invited sorry china has hosted the c plus c5 summit so before uh, it has hosted virtually but now they met uh, in china so this is about c plus c5 summit so the c5 countries are kazakhstan uzbekistan turkmenistan tajikistan and kyrgyzstan so they met in china so china has hosted it so it marked the 30 years of diplomatic relations so here the importance of the central asian countries is kazakhstan is world's largest producer of uranium you know why uranium is used uranium is used to generate the nuclear power so tying good relations with kazakhstan is very important even for india okay so kazakhstan is the world's largest producer of uranium coming to turkmenistan turkmenistan has huge reserves of natural gas so natural gas is one of the important fuel which we need to promote sustainable development so this is uh the importance of turkmenistan and in order to build good relations with central asia india has uh, built many development projects in the central asian countries and made several peaceful agreements partnership and strategic agreements so some of them are the chabahar port was built in iran so here you can see the chabahar port is located over here so it connects iran to afghanistan okay so and from here to kandla in, in of india so this is about the chabahar port and next it is ashba ashgabad agreement so ashgabad agreement was laid for better transportation between kazakhstan uzbekistan turkmenistan iran and pakistan and to broaden the political economic security cultural connections connect central asia policy that is caa policy of 2012 was introduced so india has signed strategic partnership agreements with kazakhstan turk uh, tajikistan uzbekistan and civil nuclear agreements with kazakhstan okay why kazakhstan india has signed civil nuclear agreements with kazakhstan why only kazakhstan because kazakhstan is the world's largest producer of uranium for that reason india has signed civil nuclear agreements so all these central asian countries have rich source of natural resources reserves so central asian maintaining good relations with the central asia is very important because it generates uh, trade economic development will take place and we also get huge natural resources reserves etc from these central asian countries so you know also to attract young professionals for capacity building 
India's International Technical and Economic Cooperation that is ITEC program was also introduced thus China's influence over the central asian regions may affect the India's security so India is trying to strengthen relations with the central asian countries the topic is role of India's defense cooperation initiatives in meeting foreign policy goals so here um, if you maintain friendly relations with other countries we can establish peace in our own country war situations decrease trade and economy with other countries increases and mutual cooperation and coordination in different policies programs and in the international platforms support for our country also will get increased so to maintaining friendly relations with other countries is very much important for our security purpose also so india has important foreign policy goals that is to protect indian diaspora in other countries so the people the citizens of india who go and live in other countries are called indian diaspora so we have to maintain friendly relations with other countries because our people are present in their countries so to engage and protect indian diaspora we have to maintain friendly relations and next to protect india from traditional and non traditional threats what are these traditional and non traditional threats the threats like terrorism uh, smuggling all these come under traditional threats and non traditional traditional threats come under some crimes like that okay so to protect india from traditional and non traditional threats friendly relations are important and uh, we have many global summits like sarc g20 summit all these in all these summits to voice our uh, to pro- to give india's voice we have to uh, get support from other countries so for that reason we have to maintain friendly relations and uh, to promote to exchange mutual technological advancements military advancements and any other space related updates friendly relations are needed so all these are the india's foreign policy important goals so here recently india has gifted indigenously built in service military missile corvette ins kirpan to vietnam so here what is the meaning of indigenous indigenous means which we made okay which is native of india okay so indian made ins kirpan was gifted to vietnam so this is one of the act of friendly relations with the vietnam okay so here um coming to this one uh, friendly cooperations for any country good trade relations strategic and cultural relations are important same like that foreign relations are important for india to protect our indian diaspora to exchange advanced technologies to protect india from traditional and non traditional threats to ensure opinion on the global forums good relations is very much important to promote regional stability research, to improve research and development boost defense industry all these things so here uh we have india has come forward with many initiatives like expanding the military cooperation humanitarian assistance to the un peacekeeping forces expanding defense cooperation agreements with other countries so all these we, we have expanded defense cooperation with 53 countries okay so to increase exports of aerospace and defense goods services the defense promotion and export promotion policy 2020 was released by the ministry of defense so all these are uh, the initiatives taken by india so we also conduct joint military exercises so with usa we can, uh, we do yudh abhyas exercise so like that with nepal um, with australia with japan with all these countries we do military exercises so in order to maintain friendly relations so all these are 
the acts we 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 do military exercises we participate in humanitarian assistance if there is any natural disaster we uh, our indian team goes there and rescues so several operations were done to rescue other people other country people so like this friendly cooperations exist strategically also it will promote india and uh, recently this topic was in news because recently india has gifted the indigenously built in service missile corvette ins kirpan to vietnam so this is about the india's defense cooperation initiatives in meeting foreign policy goals the next topic is 2.5 75 years of the universal declaration of human rights so here universal declaration of human rights is the international document that is adopted by the united nation general assembly so united nation declaration of human rights is called undr okay so the undr provides rights and freedoms for all the human beings in the entire world so this is like a universal document which tells that for every human being their uh, right to live right to dignity all the basic rights should be given so this is the importance of the universal declaration of human rights so it was adopted by the un general assembly so here the un general assembly consists of 194 member countries okay so in the 1948 it was adopted so till date that is till 2023 it has completed 75 years since its implementation so it was the first legal document that was set up to promote the fundamental rights that are universally protected so these universal rights are applicable to everybody regardless of nationality gender etc so all the basic fundamental rights like right to live food education work health liberty etc over 30 rights are included in this UNDR okay so these rights are like the protectionist policy that protects the humans from torture slavery and other sorts of violence among human beings we know in africa saudi arabia and even in india there are different um, situations where the people are under the slavery for many years so maybe based upon the caste system or maybe because of the racial discrimination many of them were under slavery and they were also under the human trafficking so to protect everybody these rights are given and it was uh, signed by all the 194 member countries okay so look at the box over here so under udhr there are some important rights so those important rights are all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights no one shall be held in slavery and servitude no one shall be subjected to torture all are equal before the law no one shall be subjected to arbitrary arrest detention or exile economic social and cultural rights such as rights to social security health and adequate housing no one shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with his privacy so all these are some of the rights under the declaration so here uh, this udhr was established in 1948 and till 2023 it has completed 75 years so 75th anniversary on the udhr will be celebrated so so this one 75th anniversary will will be celebrated on the 10th december of 2023 so human uh, rights 75 initiative was launched as a uh, tribute for the 75th successfully completion of udhr so to promote and contribute towards equality justice and accountability this human rights 75 initiative was launched okay and the theme for it is uh, dignity freedom justice for all okay so here the three main goals of human rights 75 initiative are the first one is promoting universality and indivisibility second one is looking to the future the third one is bolstering the human rights ecosystem 
so even though the universal declaration of human rights are not legally binding due to the implementation of the universal human rights in many countries uh, <clears throat> many countries also came forward to implement these human rights in their own countries and provided freedom to all their fellow human beings for example vienna has adopted the vienna declaration so here Yes, in this box you can see about the Vienna Declaration and Program Action (VDPA). So Vienna uh, has adopted the Vienna Declaration and Program of Action to strengthen human rights work and the establishment of the Office of Hi High Commissioner of for Human Rights. So this was uh, recently done in June twenty twenty three to mark the thirtieth anniversary of VDPA. Okay, so. these are all examples of the implementation of the universal declaration of human rights in their own countries but there are some challenges to the human rights universal human rights are established to promote peace and prosperity education and development among the countries but as per the undp theme you can see over here in this reports all these are the challenges of human rights so here as per the undp's human development report 2023 1.1 billion people out of 6.1 billion people live in acute multidimensional poverty so here uh, about uh, <coughs> here in this report the undp's human human development report they stated that about 6 uh, 1.1 billion out of 6.1 billion people live in acute multidimensional po po poverty like poor health due to malnutrition lack of clean water and electricity poor quality of work etc you can see such type of people in your own locations in in your own surroundings right so the poverty is still present even though it has completed 75 years our universal declaration of human rights has completed 75 years but still it is not so effective poverty is still present there are frequent wars conflicts and terrorism spreading across the countries due to the recent ukraine war and other conflicts over 100 million people were displaced as per the world food program estimates uh, the world food program has estimated that more than 345 million people face high levels of food insecurity in 2023 so food insecurity is doubled than that of 2020 so as per the world economic forum's global trade report global gender report 2022 it will take 132 years more to reach the gender equality the racial ethnic and religious hatred among the countries are increasing the discrimination and violence against the people in the lgbtq plus community was too common and the violence of the country's authoritarian groups on its people have become more common military coup in myanmar taliban taking over human rights in afghanistan and the executions and arrests in iran are some of the examples on the other hand several initiatives were taken to promote human rights so look at the box over here uh, there are four main conventions like the convention on human right uh, convention on the prevention and punishment of the crime of genocide 1948 and convention on the rights of the child convention on the rights of the persons with disabilities of 2006 etc and 1951 refugee convention and its 1967 protocol so all these are the major conventions to promote human rights and next human rights council was implemented to strengthen promote and protect human rights human rights are implemented in the un policies and programs like sustainable development goals where right to education gender equality and other basic needs are promoted and un peacekeeping force provide security and protect the humans human rights in the conflicted areas around the world responsibility 
to protect r2p that is responsibility to protect r2p is an international norm norm framed to protect the human rights in the war crimes communalism religious violence etc and several national human rights institutions were established to promote human rights even in india national human rights commission of india was established even though many of them are launched still we see the violations of human rights in many cases global systems like office of un high commissioner for human rights international criminal court regional human rights system and other institutions should take strict action against human rights violation bringing awareness of the basic rights to the people is also very important both public and private organizations should contribute towards making the universal rights a living reality so this is all about the universal human rights declaration topic the next topic is 2.6 United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organizations UNESCO so here UNESCO is a specialized agency of the United Nations that consists of 194 countries and 11 associate members so the main objective is to attain quality education for all and addressing social and ethical challenges so it contributes to promote international cooperation in education sciences culture communication and information even though israel us lichtenstein are un members they are not part of unesco but us has formally joined the un unesco after 5 years gap because of this reason this topic was in news so in 2018 us has left unesco stating that unequal categorization of sites because of the ancient jewish sites are named as the palestinian heritage sites so us supports israel and we know there is a frequent war like situations between israel and the palestine so us has withdrawn from unesco after naming the ancient jewish site as the palestinian heritage sites and it stopped funding to unesco and from then onwards china became the largest funder to the unesco and started influencing the unesco and due to this the us is slowly losing its soft power influence with its member countries so in 2023 june month us has again formally rejoined the unesco after 5 years absence and proposed to pay the pending the due amount of uh, over 600 million dollars so coming to the admission of unesco members the countries which are not part of unesco are admitted to unesco by recommendations of executive body and by two third majority voting of the general conference the countries which are not members but are admitted are called the associate members so coming to the achievements of unesco so the achievements of unesco is present over here in this box so coming to the achievements of unesco it preserves 1000 157 world heritage sites in 167 countries it can uh, contribute it it has contributed to the significant progress in the global education and literacy rate of the adults has increased from 76.7% to 86.81% between 1999 to 2020 and uh, special attention is provided to the world heritage sites in danger so the list of world heritage sites in danger is maintained by the world heritage committees so there are some issues faced by the unesco so the issues faced by the unesco are the unesco does not have its own body to select the site in fact the local government should suggest the names to the unesco and as the us has withdrawn from the unesco in 2018 the funds for the unesco went down and it further reduced funds to the education so promoting education is one of the major goal of unesco but due to the lack of lack of funds it could not fund 
more to education and due to the chinese influence on the unesco china became the major decision maker in allocating as it allocated more so uh, even the unesco policies and programs uh, have been uh, majorly influenced by the china thus developed countries should contribute more to the country more to the unesco so that china's influence can also be countered so this is all about the unesco world heritage sites the next topic is india and egypt relations so on 25th june our prime minister has visited egypt and signed the strategic partnership agreement so the agreement consists of four elements that is political first one is political defense and security the second one is economic engagement the third one is scientific and academic collaboration and the fourth one is cultural and people to people contacts so we have good relations with egypt in fact egypt has helped india to conquer goa from portuguese under operation vijay egypt has the control on the suez canal and egypt has stopped the portuguese military ships and in the egypt in the suez canal and helped india to implement operation vijay successfully so from ancient times we have good trade relations with egypt egypt is a good market for our defense goods so china's trade with egypt is almost double than that of india so for security and good economic cooperation the strategic partnership agreement was signed by both our countries that is india and egypt and three memorandum of understandings was signed on agriculture archaeology and antiquities and on competition law so our indian prime minister was also awarded the egypt's uh, highest state of honor called the order of the nile award so this award is only provided for the persons who have done useful service to its countries so our pm has also visited heliopolis commonwealth war grave cemetery and al hakim mosque in egypt so here heliopolis commonwealth war cement gravery is a memorial of the british indian army who died in the world war 1 and world war 2 so it is a symbol for the sacrifice of nearly 4300 indian soldiers who fought for egypt and palestine and eden and al hakim mosque in egypt is visited by pm so the dawoodi bohra muslim sect who originate who were originated in egypt and settled in india during the 11th century has renovated this mosque and it is and they are only maintaining the mosque since 1970 so this is about uh, the india and egypt relations the next topic is 75 years of united nation peacekeeping so wherever war like situation occurs the united nation peacekeepers go and settle the disputes they rescue the people they try to establish peace and security in those war and conflicted areas and countries so here recently in the month of may 75th anniversary of the un peacekeeping was celebrated so its theme was peace begins with me so the peace begins with me campaign was also launched to recognize the service and sacrifice of the united nation peacekeepers so the campaign has called everybody to join the global movement for peace so this is all about the united nation peacekeeping so here uh, one another department of peace operations that is dpo is uh, there to learn so here Uh, it is formally created in 1992 under as the department of peacekeeping operation so it assists the member countries and the secretary general to maintain international peace and security okay so this is about the dpo the next topic is india united nation sustainable development goals cooperation framework the major goal of india is to implement sustainable development goals so several initiatives like swachh bharat mission state action plans on climate change coal tax national adaptation fund for climate change etc was launched by india to work efficiently proper planning and implementation is very important united nation sustainable development goals cooperation framework will create proper planning 
and implementation so niti aayog and united nations have signed government of india united nations sustainable development cooperation framework of 2023 to 2027 so the agenda for it is people prosperity planet and participation so these four pillars concentrate mainly on health and well being nutrition and food security quality education economic growth and decent work environment climate wash and resilience empowering people communities and institutions so with this initiative proper planning and implementation instruments will be improved for the sustainable development goals the next topic is international criminal court so icc or international criminal court is formed to investigate and prosecute the individuals accused of serious international crimes like genocides crimes against humanity war crimes aggression and it was established in the year 1998 so the international criminal court does not have its own police uh, police force but it depends on the state's cooperation so this topic was in news because in july month south africa held a south africa should hold the bric summit so due to russia ukraine war there are few allegations of war crimes against the russian president so if russian president attends the bric summit south africa have to give arrest warrant to him but uh, russian president did not attend the summit so in that situation south africa was thinking about the legal options if russian president attends the bric summit okay so for that reason uh, this topic was in use the important points to learn over here is the international criminal court doesn't have any police force of its own the state police force have to support it and the next one is uh, all the countries should be responsible for the international criminals who comes into their own country okay so these are the two important points that we have to learn in this topic the next one is universal postal union so it is the second oldest international organization established in the year 1874 it has 180 192 member countries including india and its headquarters is located in switzerland the main objective is to set the rules for the international mail exchanges and to make recommendations to stimulate growth in mail parcel financial services etc so in june month cabinet has approved the establishment of the regional office of the universal postal union in delhi the next topic is asia pacific plan protection commission apppc okay so the a triple p c is a body that promotes for development and protection of plants it sets up the standards for the phytosanitary measures etc so this topic was in news because the a triple p c that is a p p p c has unanimously elected india as a chair of the standing committee on integrated pest management the next topic is combined maritime forces that is cmf so cmf or the combined maritime force is a group of 34 countries naval forces that works to counter narcotics smuggling and it helps to suppress the piracy and other illegal acts in the uh, naval bases so it is commanded by the us naval Ad- admiral so its headquarters is located in bahrain and india is also a member of the cmf so this topic was in news because the united arab emirates has recently withdrawn its participation in the cmf the next topic is northern sea route or nsr so here you can see in the picture over here this is this line is the north sea route so the northern sea route or the northeast passage connects the eastern and the western parts of the arctic ocean the entire route lies in the arctic waters and within the russia's exclusive economic zone so Uh, Russia has recently announced to invest 24 billion dollars to develop northern sea route so the challenges include the geostrategic conflict if Russia exercises its sovereignty over the north sea route 
and arctic fog may reduce the sailing time and there might be environmental risk and increased operational cost if this north sea route is implemented so this is about the overall complete view on the international relations of the june month current affairs thank you for watching